What are we doing today? Hey guys, Marty up north. Sorry if there's a bit of an echo in the uh, building. Uh, welcome to my shop. I think some of you have seen my shop before. Um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, quick update, so you guys saw that I've been doing a little bit more winter camping. Uh, I've explained it before. The reason I'm doing more winter camping is my winters used to be, my weekend win, my winter weekends used to be almost exclusively hockey trips. You know, here in, uh, here in Canada, hockey's a huge part of our culture. Uh, I have, th I have uh, three sons, but Nick played um, uh, a lot of uh, high caliber hockey and I coached. I started coaching him early on uh, over the years and I followed him through uh, his career. And when his career came, his amateur career came to an end uh, a couple of years ago when he went to university, he decided to pursue university full time, and, and, uh, and, uh, which is great for him. He's doing great, by the way. So since I'm not coaching hockey, I'm, I now I have weekends available to go do a lot of camping in the winter, backpacking. And so project number one that I've been working on is you saw I built a pulk and then on the last trip Evan and I tested the pulk and the concept is sound I need some fine-tuning on the pulk but but I wanted to know how you know because like I said in a previous video um, in the winter you're taking about you know 25 30 percent more gear because you need to stay warm and then you're traveling a little bit slower so the pulk proves out to be a great concept and allows me to carry a little bit more gear and I want to make sure that's possible now if you follow a lot of videos on YouTube in the winter, you'll see that right now there's a, there's a fad where everybody's building um, little portable or hot tenting. Hot tenting's been around for a while, but now people are doing the DIY, the, the do-it-yourself hot tenting. And, and I've seen a lot of great videos. And uh, um, I know Maddie up north, or Maddie Outdoors, sorry, is doing one. But I had been following up on a guy up in uh, Rocky Mountain House, uh, Dave's Bullets. And... Um, can't remember his exact name, but I'll, 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 I'll post a link. And Dave's done about 10 DIY uh, tent stoves. And I like some of his designs and I'm gonna do a little bit of refinement to his designs, but basically I'm gonna do a, a design, a knockoff of, of Dave's. Now, Dave has done some where he's used an old paint can, but then he discovered these end caps that, uh, that they sell at hardware stores. Um, these are end caps for um, heating and air conditioning ducting and uh, you know they're, they're six bucks they come in different lengths I think these ones are 8 by 12 you can get them uh, 10 by 12 10 by 14 10 by 16 but so basically uh, I, I, I already started putting one together but uh, you know they, these are the plates and what I at first I thought at first I thought I was gonna build a stove that was going to be collapsible but I realized you know what collapsible will save a little bit of space but having it properly built rigid and non-collapsible is fine because you're still taking pieces like uh, like the elbows and the pipes and they can go in there and I can stuff other stuff in the stove while I'm transporting it but so having one that was collapsible was a nice idea but I thought in the field when it's cold and I'm trying to assemble it, it's going to be a pain in the butt I mean I was thinking of of, of doing a collapsible one and using this ready rod with wing nuts and going through the you know going through to tighten the whole thing together but in the end I've chosen instead to um, to use rivets and to to assemble the whole thing and and then just use rivets and uh, and I think that'll be a, a nice solution so I'll, I'll show a few steps in the assembly but fundamentally I'll show you the finished product but uh, and just a note, Dave was quite, you know, Dave said he used aluminum rivets and he was surprised that they didn't melt. Maybe Dave didn't understand that there are actually two kinds of div rivets. There are stainless steel or steel rivets and there are aluminum ones. I suspect that he had uh, steel ones, but I made sure I got nice little steel rivets for this project. My bench is looking a little bit like AVE, so, um, you know, these are, these are, um, Actually, this is a steel rivet, that one is, and then you can see an aluminum one is uh, slightly different and actually a good test to do it. I don't have something around, but is to put a magnet. If you put a magnet on there, that wouldn't be magnetic and this would be magnetic. So,
tricky part is definitely drilling the holes. Riveting after that is fairly straightforward. Breaking helmet steel rivets. Got the basic box then I took one long piece and cut it and I'm gonna put it here like that and then I'll put a door over this a little Dremel with a, with a cutting disc does good so do tin snips weighs about four or five pounds, but no problem with the pulk. And I need a hole here for the exhaust and I need to bolt a door across and put a couple of holes for, uh, for the draft control. All right, it's not the prettiest thing I've ever built, but there, I might put another piece here just to prevent the smoke from drafting out. The only thing I don't really like is is this door. I mean, it's it's a function of this hinge is so cheap. And uh, when you close it, there's, there's, there's a bit of a gap here, but then as the stove is drafting, it'll collapse. I might have to put something, a strap here or something. Uh, I might have to modify it, but, uh, but this fundamentally works right now. If you close it go. So all that's left now is to uh, put a hole in the top for the exhaust and uh, we can test it. Okay. I had a chance to sleep on this and watch a few other videos and I don't like that. So I got another idea for the latch. Much better. There. So now I'll just put a, a little bracket here with a notch in it so now it closes and actually I can probably bend this a bit and you know I might even put a little loop on that I don't know how hot that'll get but uh, much better design and then this 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 hole will just serve I'm gonna have to put vent holes here to control the draft same with the damper on the exhaust so uh, that hole will serve a purpose eventually now the next step, which is almost the last step, is actually one of the steps I dread the most because I have to cut a circle in here and uh, for the pipe. And I only have uh, straight shears. I don't or uh, tin snips. I don't. Some some are angled a little bit, so I'm going to have to be very careful. And then the smaller the circle, the harder it is to cut. And, you know, I'm cutting a three-inch circle. Another way would be to use a hole saw, but I checked my hole saws and uh, the, 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 the biggest hole saw I have is uh, two and a half inch, so just not big enough. But I might, I might still start with a hole saw hole and then finish it off by hand trimming. I, I'm going to have to think about that one. Not pretty, but it'll work. Does my stove get the seal of approval of Karen up north? Close it. Look at it. Even have a locking mechanism. Oh, oh you riveted it together. Yeah, I wanted to. At first, I thought I'd do a one that could be disassembled, but I thought try trying to assemble that in the cold might be a pain in the ass, especially when your hands are frozen, and I might curse it. So, is be, this part gonna get hot? No. Well, so what? Well, is it going to burn the bottom of the tent or anything? There's, there's no floor to the tent. There's no floor? You came to the shop. You came to the kingdom, and you did not bear gifts. Yeah, that's right. I'm leaving. Where's the gifts? That's your gift. Where's the gifts? What gift? The gifts of beer. You drank them all. Oh, there's the latest addition to the family. <whistles> Jasper. Look at him. Look at little Jasper. Hi, Jasper. Hold him up. Here Hold comes up. Dexter. Hi, Dexter. Hi, buddy. Hi, Tika. I'm testing an idea. So if I have three holes like this for vents, maybe even four, let's say, and then let's say I cut a strip of, uh, of sheet metal that'll cover those three holes, 
if I open it like that, how do I have to place them so that they each open one by one? So that opens one hole completely. That opens two. And that opens four or three. So do I put them at a bit of an angle? Oh, I know what I do. I do it this way. I put them like that. No, that won't work either. Or you need a wider piece of paper like this. You need a wider strip. I see. Change that design. If you put them farther apart. And then, let's say it's wider. The strip is wider and near the bottom. Yeah, it covers the bottom holes. There you go. Uh, nope, that opens one, two, No way to do four. There's a design. There's an optimum somewhere that I gotta figure out. Here's what we got. So a little trap door and then my vents. And then I wanna put a grate in the bottom. And the very, very last thing I need to do is uh, put a hole in here and put a damper plate in there. But they sell those ready-made. I just need to go pick one up. So you just put a hole and you bolt in a, a damper. So it costs a couple of bucks. So I'm not gonna sweat that. Last thing I'm gonna do is try and put a grate in the bottom. So I'm gonna cut this here and bend it down somehow. And then I want a grate in the bottom. I'm not measuring a lot, but this is a prototype. In engineering, the theory is, for the when you're designing something for the first time, you, you engineer rapidly, prototype. Interesting. Let's see how that fits. I went too too high the first time, so I sh shaved it down. But check this out. Now, awesome. Keeps it off so it won't burn out the bottom. Looks gorgeous. Opens up. Right on the inside. Venting, or draft, control the draft. details and I'm not gonna put it on today or maybe I will but is uh, this is ducting pipe but uh, it can also be used for uh, for this application struggle but perfect yeehaw there you go that took a little bit longer Normally I'd probably find slightly smaller pieces, but I'm not in the bush right now, I'm in my backyard. When I'm lighting one of these in our hunting camp, we get a little uh, 
sort of a little tuna can and this, our stoves are bigger we get a little t empty tuna can and put a little bit of diesel kind of thing and then uh, shove it underneath there and it helps to light but uh, this is actually going pretty good Now, while that gets going, I just want to talk about one thing real quick. Um, the 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 duct work that we're that I'm using has got some uh, is galvanized, so it's got a, a little thin coating, you know, a couple of uh, molecules thick of uh, of uh, zinc. And some people are paranoid about zinc. Well, zinc vapors, yes, you know, when welders that are welding on uh, galvanized steel, have special electrodes, special rods, and actually any welder doesn't want to breathe in fumes regardless, and so there's a, there's a fear among the community that zinc is bad, and I've seen some videos where guys go out of their hand, away with, uh, with uh, muriatic, acid, muriatic acid or vinegar or things like that to try and remove the zinc coating, but uh, as a chemical engineer, I'm pretty confident that the, the zinc in this case is not going to um, vaporize. It's going to it's, it's just going to stay baked on there and it's not going to fill the atmosphere with any kind of toxic vapor so I'm not I'm not fundamentally concerned about that so I'm not going to go out of my way to uh, uh, try and remove the zinc off of this thing. Just a couple of minutes and things went well. If I close this door, and leave this open for a while, get some draft going. Already smoking. Now, no engineer in the oil patch that shouldn't have uh, a temperature gun, so I have a temperature gun. I used to use this in the good old days to measure uh, reciprocating compressors, if you measure the temperature of the valves, the compression valves, a lot of pieces of equipment, in fact, when you measure, can, you can diagnose equipment. You can see if a valve, you know, thermodynamically, when you're compressing a gas, there's an expected temperature. And if the temperature is not exactly uh, correct based on the compression ratio, then you, you have a faulty valve. But, uh, so with this, without getting scientific, I can tell you that's hot. It's very hot. It's ex well, here, let's do a scientific experiment. Okay, that's hot. Hot enough to boil water. Uh, I won't record the temperatures because the uh, metal is too shiny. There we go. On the paper, it's recording... Uh, you know, it's hovering around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty good. Right now, all the smoke is taking the path of least resistance and coming out the, the stack. Now, if this stack was a little bit higher, it might have a little bit of difficulty, but, you know, I was worried that there was a bit of gap around there, but I don't think any smoke would be coming into the tent. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. And if you want to really slow down the burn, you just close the vent like that and starve the fire a little bit. They'll still get air from these cracks, but uh, in, you know, even in our hunting camp, um, you, you still can't, you know, it's, it's nearly impossible to get one of these things burning all night long, even a big one. So. Um, what we try and do is at the end of the night we put wet logs in there and then close it all up and it tends to burn a little bit longer but the secret is to set an alarm and have somebody wake up frequently usually there's somebody in camp who has to go take a pee in the middle of the night and he's the guy who puts uh, more wood on the fire but but just a point too 
uh, winter camping, no matter what, you're not gonna, especially when it's minus 30, you're not gonna have a 20 degrees Celsius inside your tent, depending on the tent. If you have a wall tent, a good canvas tent, yeah, you can get extremely, you can get very hot inside the tent. But if you're going with a light, thin tent, don't expect a stove to warm up the inside of your tent to 20 degrees Celsius, but it'll absolutely take the chill out and make it very comfortable to sleep. But what's really important about a stove in winter camping is that, um, when you're burning a fire, you're, the products of combustion are CO2 and water vapor. And so if you try and dry clothes over an open fire, you're actually trying to dry your clothes with steam, which won't work. It, they, they get dry, but not completely dry. Whereas this, this is uh, convective heat. This is heat that go, that, 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 that's heating the air and it's drier. So now if, you're, uh, if this is in your tent and you hang a, um, a robe close by and dry clothes, you're going to get some clothes pretty dry with a stove like this. Very hot right there, not so hot there, not so hot there. But I bet you that's hot enough that you could put a pot and boil some water. What do you think of your dad's design? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Patrick's studying to be an engineer. He's in first year engineering, done his first semester. You guys are going to do projects like this? Yeah, probably. Yeah? What are you thinking of going into? Mechanical. Mechanical? Check out his jacket. Patrick is a two times provincial champion at football. Look at the size of him. Here. That's my son. What? Yeah, how'd that happen? <laughs> Patrick brought up a good point. I think the rivets are a good idea to have this solid. And if it, it you know, there's already, there's already plenty of risk in, in using a wood stove inside a tent. Uh, I can bust a hole through there, something can fall, uh, rivet might even fail, whatever. But uh, if it's all screwed up with, screwed together with uh, wing nuts and whatnot, I think that might, that, that's, that was complicating why. Okay, so, I'm just going to disassemble it because I want to weigh it, but, uh, I'm going to take out. Great. Come out. And then I'm just gonna okay. okay, so that's zeroed. I emptied the stove, it's done burning. Let's weigh it. Nineteen hundred and thirty seven grams. Pipe and elbow. Actually, I'll do one at a time. Pipe is 451. Okay. And an elbow is 126 for elbow. And lastly, the grate, which is optional kind of thing. 251 for the grate. DIY that cost under $60. Pretty impressed though. How do you get the axe? Hope you guys enjoyed this. Next step will be to get a tent ready for this and uh, and a field trial. But unfortunately today is December 21st. Uh, two days from now I'm driving uh, north to White Court to be with the rest of the family. So uh, a full blown trial. We'll have to wait until uh, after Christmas. Anyways, Merry Christmas everyone and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks.